I'm going to do five exercises with you, if you allow me to, to increase your happiness while you're sitting here on your seat, inshallah ta'ala. So the first thing I want you all to do is to please smile, even if you're faking it. Number one, it's charity. You're going to get some good deeds, but listen to this research. They did a study where they took depressed patients and they put something in their mouth to fake a smile. And they scanned their brain throughout the whole process. And it just took about four minutes of a fake smile to actually turn the parts of the brain that registered sadness off and light up the parts of the brain that registered happiness. And I can attest to this. I remember one time I was having a horrible day and I had to go give a lecture and I couldn't cancel. And I got into my car and I was crying. I'm driving to go give a lecture and I am crying. I get to the, uh, it was a mass youth center. I get to the youth center and I park my car and I take some deep breaths and I'm like, Donia, you have to do this. It's just gonna be 30 minutes. So you'll be in and out, it'll be okay. I motivated myself to open the door, get out of my car, wiped my tears, started walking towards the door, and this little Syrian boy, may Allah bless him, ran to the door to open it for me. And then he smiled in my face. And even though I really didn't want to, how could you not smile back at this cute little kid? So I forced the smile. And then he said, Sister Dunya, when I found out that you were going to be the guest lecturer tonight, I asked my parents to bring me. I'm like, really, why? He's like, because you're always so smiley, and when I look at you, I feel happy. <laughs> By Allah, I left that gathering, and my whole day, all that was stressing me out, went out the window, and I went home so happy, subhanAllah. So smile. It's a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Revive that sunnah. It hurts me so bad every time I walk into the masjid. And I don't see any smiles. <laughs> like we're the ummah of smiles. We're the nation of the Prophet ﷺ who the Sahaba said we never looked at him except that he was smiling. So let's smile from now until the end of my lecture and let's see how you feel afterwards. The next thing I want you to do is to turn to the person next to you Brothers with brothers, obviously, sisters with sisters. Unless you're mahrams, please don't get me in trouble. There's going to be like a hashtag, fire sister dunya. She made us do some weird stuff. And I want you to turn around and please do this. Either shake or hug the person next to you. And I'm going to tell you why. And then when I come down, I need someone to shake my hand or hug me too. Come on, ladies. I see you. MashaAllah, Lama Barik. Look at those real smiles. Can I tell you the research? Let me tell you the research real quick. So they did a study where they took women who were experiencing postpartum depression. And the sisters can relate to this. Postpartum depression. And they grouped the women into three different groups. One group, they gave them antidepressants. And one group, they gave them a sugar pill. Placebo, nothing. And then the next group, they ask their partner or their husband or whoever is with them to just touch them, their skin, to have skin-on-skin -skin contact for five minutes a day. And guess what happened? The women who got that five minutes of skin-on-skin -skin contact reported lower levels of depression, even lower than those women who took antidepressants. SubhanAllah. Now we know this is a sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ. I don't need to sit here and quote to you study after study. The Prophet ﷺ, to encourage us to shake each other's hand, he said that as long as you're shaking someone's hand while you're holding their hand, what happens? Your sins fall. The Sahaba would sit there and hold each other's hands for like 20 minutes. And then they'd walk past the tree and let go and then reunite and shake each other's hands again. The Prophet ﷺ constantly touched his Sahaba. How many hadiths do we have of a companion who says, Oh, the Prophet ﷺ spoke to me and he put his hand on my shoulder. Forget that. Hadith Jibreel. Where we learn the adab and we learn almost everything of our religion. Jibreel ﷺ came to teach us our religion. And before even speaking, he taught us the importance of physical touch. Where the hadith says he put his 
let his knees on his knees and his hands on his thighs. Jibreel alayhi salam touched the Prophet I can go on and on about the psychological uh, effects of physical touch and the communication and how communication is more effective, but my time is up. And I still have three more things I want you to do. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm going to take two more minutes. The next thing, I want you to please take out your phone. I know, usually lectures are like, please put your phones away. But please take out your phone. Yalla everyone, bismillah. And open up the notes app. If you don't have the notes app, write a text message to yourself. And I want you to think of three things you're truly grateful for. It can be the fact that since you woke up this morning, your heart has been pumping about 2,000 gallons of blood throughout your body, and you didn't even have to think about it. Allahu Akbar. Or it could be the fact that right now your kidneys are and your liver are purifying your blood. And you didn't even have to say in the morning, hey, can you please do that for me today? It could be the fact that we are gathered here today in the company of angels, literally. Where the Prophet ﷺ said that there's no gathering like this except that the angels are there. And that the angels cover them with their wings and that the tranquility and the sakina of Allah descends on them. It could be the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with food today. I want you to write down three things that you're grateful for. Studies have shown just doing this simple exercise every day for 21 days can increase your baseline happiness by 25%. While you're on your phone, I want you to message someone that you're grateful for and express your appreciation towards them because the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ لَمْ يَشْكُرُ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ اللَّهِ Those who do not give thanks, who are not appreciative to people, are not grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can be your parents, it can be your spouse, it can be your sibling, it could be a friend. It can be whoever you want it to be. But don't leave here tonight without sending that message. And last but not least, listen to this beautiful hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Would you like the Prophet ﷺ to make dua for you to be happy? I'm not going to say it until I get an answer. Would you like the Prophet ﷺ to make dua for you to be happy? <laughs> Insha'Allah. Okay, bismillah. Listen to this authentic hadith. May Allah bring happiness. May Allah is Allahumma, right? A dua. May Allah bring happiness to a person who hears something from us and he conveys it as he heard it. You heard many a hadith from me today. Pick one, share it with someone. And the Prophet ﷺ will make dua that you will be happy. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who's capable of all things, I ask him by his greatest name, the one that if we ask him by it, he responds to us. O oh Allah, forgive all of our sins, the past, the present, and the future ones. O oh Allah, exchange all of our sins for good deeds and erase the ill effects of our sins from our lives, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, replace all of our sadness with happiness and our anxiety with serenity. Ya Allah, you know and only you know our needs. Fulfill all of our needs and give us that which is best in this life and in the hereafter. Ya Allah, allow us to die with Iman and to meet you with Iman. Ya Allah, allow our graves to be portions of Jannah and resurrect us on pulpits of light. Ya Allah, enter us into the highest level of Jannah with your beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without any previous reckoning or punishment. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah khayran, barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.